This podcast is powered by Zencaster. My guest on today's podcast is the sensational Liv Warfield. A Liv mm. Warfield show is like no other. It's like watching Tina Turner, Sade, and James Brown all in one, but she is uniquely her own artist. Liv's powerful vocals and enormous stage presence is why she has been invited to perform and record with music royalty from Prince and Lionel Richie to Cyndi Lauper and Nancy Wilson. She's had show-stopping performances on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Late Show with David Letterman, and The Arsenio Hall Show. She's a Soul Train Music Award winner and was nominated as a BET Best New Artist. She has brought down the house with her electric performances at major festivals such as Montreux Jazz Festival and Essence Festival. She is prominently featured on the upcoming Prince release, Welcome to America, the latest Nancy Wilson release, You and Me, the forthcoming June Moon Project, and is sought out by musical titans such as Eric Gales, Ray Angry, and The Roots Black Thought for collaborations. Liv is currently recording her latest album for release in 2022 and is currently starring as Madame Zinzani in Teatro Zinzani, Chicago, a circus cabaret through the beginning of 2022. Don't miss this opportunity to witness a Liv Warfield show up close and personal. You'll never forget it. You can connect with Liv at livewarfieldofficial.com and on all social media platforms at Liv Warfield. Thank you so much, Liv, for coming on to the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That was nice. Thank you. Your bio is so amazing. Everything about oh, you is so amazing. Like, I am just so, so, so grateful to be performing with you in Teatro Zanzani, Chicago. Mm. Like, it is just everything. I'm really grateful to have had this time to work with you and to just be in your presence night after night, sometimes twice a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you power through all of these songs, Liv. Like you are so incredible. And you just actually came back to us from London because you yes. were performing, I uh, want to say, at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, is that correct? Yes. For their, yes. Uh, their Christmas performance and show. And I would love to hear about uh, all of that, Liv. How was that experience for you? I mean, that is so incredible. And thank you again for coming on to the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. Thank you, Shanae. Well, I feel the same way about you, girl. You're You're brilliant. I, I, you have to know that too. Um, Thank you. So you asked me about the Royal Albert Hall. That was probably the most um, crazy experience for me because the energy was so big. Like I know the people have walked those stages in those hallways before me. So that was first and foremost. And I've always wanted to play in that place because of the wall of sound and how beautiful it is and just the energy. So I, I keep telling people, I wish somebody would have went with me. I went by myself <laughs> because I was so overwhelmed um, by the energy of that. You know, it's a wall of sound and it was actually with Guy Barker's big band. So I can't say exactly how many horns. I think there were probably like over 40 horns. Um, I think maybe 12 piece string section. I probably am messing this up, but it was huge. Um, two drums. It was just a wall of sound, but the experience was something I'll never forget. I hope I can go back in that room. I hope that's not the last time I'm there. <laughs> um, but the experience was incredible. It was a holiday show. And uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll never forget that wow. experience. Ever. It was beautiful. It was, it really was. Wow. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations again. I mean, Thank that you. is a historic achievement. That is, yes. I mean, yes. I, I know the Royal Albert Hall, like those are, these are just, these are milestones and I can yes. remember what it was like for you to be there and then to be there so quickly. I mean, for all of our freelancers out there that, you know, all the artists, uh, that tune into the Live Like an Acrobat podcast, we all can feel live of going in and out of country and going and doing such a huge performance while also doing a huge performance as Miss Sinsani. Yes. <laughs> and, like, and like the prep that you had to do for all of that and maintain oh, yeah. your daily schedule here in Chicago and exactly. for that and going yeah. and being ready to give all of that energy. I mean, my gosh, how yeah. do you do it? How, how did, how did that part of it feel? I mean, how are you, you know, just maintaining yourself as an artist? Well, it's, it's, it's funny you ask that because it's a crazy brain switch. 
it's like, because I love Zanzani so much. And I say this because Chicho Zanzani has allowed me the chance creatively to step outside of that box of just being the independent artist and performing my own songs and doing stuff like that. So it has allowed me the space to be super creative. But when I get outside of that, it's different. It's like the independent artist grind. Mm -hmm. There's a love hate to that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because, you know, you're your own boss, but at the same time, you're also trying to maintain the creativity piece of it. So the brain, the brain split is, is a lot, you know, for me, but I enjoy it. And I feel like with Teatro Zanzani, it allows me that space just to really be creative and just to really kind of get into that tent and with my castmates, with you all, like, I don't know, it's, it's a way to give in places and spaces that I'm not able to do that when I'm in, when I'm doing shows myself. So it's, it's just a different thing. TZ is just different. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. For anyone who has not seen Teatro Zanzani, for listeners out there, it is a whimsical circus or cabaret theater immersive show. I mean, Liv is just right there. You can just reach out and touch her. (laughs) You can reach out and touch pretty much all of us performers and we sometimes end up in your lap. That is how we are. Um, as a show, as a cast. And Liv, I wanted to tell you because this kind of like um, uh, brings kind of everything together. When I was speaking to Norm, Norman Langill, who is the founder and creator of Teatro Zanzani, he was on the podcast uh, a few weeks ago. I was also honored to interview him as well and speak to him all about how he has created this monumental show that is called mm-hmm. uh, Zanzani. But he, me and Norm met uh, years ago when I was doing the Olympic tour and Norm was the producer of that. And I was performing mm-hmm. at the time to Prince's the question of you and okay yes and so that is how we met so when he was telling me about you Liv I was like I get to work with Prince's protege Liv Warfield and I hadn't worked with Norm since then since the 2004 uh, Olympic Gymnastics Tour which people were always asking how on earth did you guys get a Prince song inside of a USA Gymnastics Olympic Tour and we were like for people that know Prince, we were like, well, have you ever heard the question of you? And when people hear it, they're like, that song sounds so Cirque du Soleil. It sounds so kind of like, it sounds so circus. So I thought that that was a really like brilliant way of like coming into the show and having like that whole connection and like bridging that gap. And I actually did ask Norm if I could have you sing the question of you <laughs> with it in, in, in this, in, 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 in Zanzani when I came here this, this, this time, I, I just posed it because I was like, wow, that I haven't performed to that since 2004 and we performed it out live with that with with that song from graffiti from graffiti bridge for those that are unfamiliar with that song it's a print song it's from graffiti bridge and my uh circus partner at the time he's just a music connoisseur and he would just find us the most incredible pieces of music but yeah it was that whole thing i've got you saying that i like 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 an like overwhelm like <laughs> chills that is amazing <laughs> Like, I need to see this. No, really. Like, that is, um, I got chills when you said that, uh, Shanae, just because I know, just because I've seen you and you are stunning, stunning when you perform. So just adding that music, adding, like, I can't even imagine, like, I want to imagine, I want to see this. Really? Yes. Yes, I know. It was like, it was, it's one of my favorite performances so cool. I've ever done. And that was like, you know, our first, um, our, our full on entry into circus because we were retiring that year uh, from the competitive realm. And so that's how I got introduced to Teatro Zanzani first in San Francisco and everything. And so like doing that with Norm and it was just, it was just such a unique experience being introduced at that age, at that time and in that way. And Norm uh, created like our intro into the ad and the entire like storyline into it and everything too like yeah it was it was very okay so we- you're you've been holding you've been withholding information from me <laughs> I, I was like, 
is amazing. I get Liv on the podcast because I want to let everyone know Liv is incredibly busy. She is incredibly sought after. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have to, can you know, remind people of that. But you know, I was like, if I can get you on the podcast, Liv, I was like, I can't wait to tell you that because that was my full me and Norm going back and forth. And I, you know, didn't even say that yet on his podcast because I wanted to save it for you know my time with you. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was really special. So who knows, maybe and I was also thinking I was like, maybe you had already at some point, I don't know, performed that song uh, in some ways or but maybe I never have. You never have. We've performed it with him. Um, um, but I've I've never mm -mm, that's amazing. Okay, Shanae. <laughs> we have to work on it out. <laughs> Seriously, and my wheels are turning as we were speaking. Oh, that's amazing. Putting that out into the universe. But yeah, so, you know, to bring it back and just like, you know, that um, that segue into your experiences, Liv. I mean, you know, your career and everything leading up to that, too. I also wanted to say that we have so much in common because you started out doing gymnastics also. And yeah. you were a sprinter. You went to college on a scholarship for track. I also sprinted for a short amount of time in between, like a lull that I had with gymnastics. I did not know that about you. And I thought, wow, because you're also too right now training a bit of circus, which I am with Drea. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Our other I think these things never leave. Um, like, because I, I started when I was three and my mom had it. And I finished, my mom had me in it till I was about 14 or 15. My body just started changing and I just couldn't do it um, as much anymore because I was really, I mean, really, really serious into it um, as a gymnast. It, it's like consuming. It can, it's just, it was consuming. It was serious. And then after that, um, I think now watching Drea and then watching TZ, it, I can understand it, you know, mm -hmm. Um those things also don't ever really leave out of your body. I don't think either. Here I am. I'm in my forties. I will not ever attempt <laughs> to do a round off flip flop layout step out again at the age. <laughs> I, I tried because somebody was like, Oh my God, you used to be a gymnast. I was like, yeah, I, can, I feel like I can still do that kind of stuff. And I did. And I landed, but I also tore my Achilles. And just in my mind, though, no. I was like, okay, I got this, you know? Um, again, because it never leaves. And you're just like, okay, let me just test it out. For me, let me test it out to see if I still have something. And, wow. <laughs> oh, I had it. I had it. But um, oh my God. going back to Brea and the whole training aerial is that at least it's not a lot of pounding on my body. But I miss... Um, I miss what gymnastics helped me do. I, I miss the openness, you know what I mean? Because the kind of sometimes the yoga connection and like having my body open and having my solar plexus open and, and stuff like that. Like I can tell even now on how I'm walking and actually I'm more inspired by you all in the tent because I'm watching you all every single day. You know, it, it helps. It, it's an actually inspiring and encouraging for all of us to keep doing it. Not, not doing, definitely not doing what you all are doing, but, <laughs> you know, taking care of your body in that sense, you know, and respecting it because you work so hard. Um, you work, you guys work really, really hard. Um, thank you so really much. Hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, this is so great for the, you know, for my gymnastics audience that tunes in, for my acrobatic audience that tunes in. Yes. The fact that you had all of that history in gymnastics, again, is so rare. And then to be who you are now and go into, you know, as, as an artist, as, as a singer, uh, you know, so multifaceted. I, like, what mm -hmm. has it been like also, too, for you performing, um, uh, you know, live with acrobatic artists with circus artists you know how is that kind of different you know if you're you know obviously performing uh in uh environments or in concert where there's not somebody active on a stage maybe like right in front of you but you know in several acts you know you're there you're there giving us your you know sensationalist <laughs> And oh, bringing all of that brilliant energy because it's my favorite to perform with a live singer and if you're gifted, um, you know, to perform with a live singer such as 
uh, you live um, while you're doing your circus act, what that brings to the performance and what that creates, the atmosphere that creates. I mean, there's really like nothing like it. So it's really a gift when we're not performing to to attract you know, of, mm. of, of a performer and getting you with like the live band. And I mean, it's really, yeah. it's really something. It's, it, it, it feels really good. I think just because I've been fortunate enough to kind of understand as a gymnast mm -hmm. and to kind of know. So I think it helps me to kind of give the energy. Like even when you extend your arms, I feel like I can connect with like holding notes longer or to help tell the story in my mind. Um, and I love it because I, again, it's just, it's just an energy about it. Um, and that for me is everything just kind of being in the now and being in the placement and watching you all. Like I enjoy it. Like I was like, I wish I could sing with you, <laughs> with you and Michael when you guys are doing your duo act. And um, like, I even sing, I'm sorry. I've even saw storm who came in when she did the um, when she was singing for Michael and Vita I thought it was the most beautiful. I just was like, I was, I had chills all over my body because there's that connection, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the human connection that you have with it. And actually when I feel that in the tent, it's just the connection, you know, mm -hmm. energy is everything. It is constant. It is ever moving. So if you can just kind of vibrate with everybody, I feel like that's, that's the one thing that I, this is my mission constantly when I'm singing is vibration. It's vibration at all times, you know? It reminds me of your song, Mantra. Mm, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the mantra of it all, yes. the vibration of it all, if I got that correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's constant just because I know this energy, well, this industry, and even I'm sure in your industry, it is fickle, yes. you know? And everybody's also trying to find their way and their path in it. And it's, we all know it's just not going to be what you want all the time. Child, I've got my vision board set up here. I know some of those things. <laughs> I know some of those things, are, you know, aren't going to happen. But at the same time, it's like, it's like the belief in it all. You know what I mean? In your path. As long as you stay steadfast. As long as you stay um, hopeful. You know, I think everything else will start to fall into place. Mm -hmm. You start losing those things, you know, it gets harder and harder. You just got to, and also just having people to remind you to stay on track, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. constantly stay on track. And I love Drea for all of that. I love you guys for that because we don't always come in with smiley faces every day. <laughs> it's hard. <I> <laughs> It's hard. It's hard. But it's nice to also have that one person that kind of understands and just is like, you good, girl? Mm -hmm. You all right today? All right, cool. We got this. You know, mm -hmm. so even that can like change the trajectory of everything. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's so important like having we're in a we're in a very small cast uh in a show like Tantra mm -hmm. Zazani and not all circus or not even all like uh cabaret shows are this small and I love the intimacy mm -hmm. of a Tantra Zazani yes. cast it's not so many people it's a very small group everyone has to do a lot just to remind everyone our show can run up to almost three hours long. Um, and mm -hmm. you're doing passages and you're doing uh, songs or portions of your act throughout that entire time. It's a very unique experience, unlike any other kind of show that you'll see out there. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. of course, Live too. you do your concerts where I just, you know, I was watching you live um, leading up to uh, having you on the podcast and the amount of energy that you <laughs> can in like five minutes. <laughs> And then me thinking about you doing like an hour and like an hour and a half and then two and a half hours and, you know, like <laughs> giving all of that energy and you are such your own artist. And I've also too, I've been listening, uh, you know, Holly Berry's movie just came out and uh, she was the director and she starred in it as well. And she's been doing a lot of interviews, which has been a very beautiful gift of someone like her giving that many interviews. I actually was going to 
almost be her body double in that movie, Bruise, that just came out. I was on the short list. Yes, I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. It didn't end up because she didn't end up using one, but um, she had a big injury, which she talks about in her interviews. And so I was going to be brought in. I had like bangs at the time. Somebody saw me in Saudi Arabia and they said they were, they knew the head coordinator there for stuns. And so I was almost there. Oh my gosh. Um, and, uh, and, you know, she's doing MMA and I'm like, it's probably a, a blessing in disguise that I didn't end up doing. It's so hard in that movie. It's so hard. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Oh my gosh, Liv. Like, if anybody. But back to her interviews, she's been speaking about, you know, how for the majority of her career, she's felt like the dancing bear and like she didn't have as much agency over her career um, as an artist. And, you know, coming and being a director now, being a producer, how she felt like for the first time in all of these years that she's had Mm -hmm. agency, that she was able to choose and choose the gaze and not have people telling her and overriding her. So I wanted to ask you too, Liv, like, how has that felt? You've been independent. You've worked in tandem with so many legends at the same time. You've been their protégés. You've given so much to them. They've given so much to you. And you're so Mm -hmm. multifaceted. Like, you can't put you in a box because you sing everything. Like, everything Mm -hmm. that I've experienced of you, you sing everything. So many different genres and working with such Mm -hmm. a variety of people. And how has that felt over the years? And how did that start from when you were younger, coming into your own and, you know, segueing out of being like a movement body artist to using your voice as your instrument as, you know, like more of your focus and bringing that into this environment, into this industry and holding your own all of these years. And again, going in so many different intriguing and different environments from Teatro Zanzani to the London, you know, to the Royal Albert Hall, to having your own setup, to, you know, going in and out of concert with, with, with legends, which you are among, you are a legend mm, yourself. So was. how is that? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to be open and you just have to be open to it. A lot of people aren't open to that. Um, mm-hmm. I just feel, A, I feel very blessed that my parents put me in positions and places and spaces not to be scared to just go and jump and move and travel. And um, I think a lot of people are scared to do that. I did it very young. And then um, also, I'm just not afraid. Uh, (laughs) Going back to gymnastics, I, I really do think that. I think from a young age, when you're in it very young, you learn like no fear right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like some of those things probably have brought into my life of just jumping and everything and trying different things and just exploring who I am. All of it has been a balancing act because trust me, I've done really stupid, stupid, stupid things as an independent artist. I think all independent artists go through it. Same. Uh, (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like the decisions... You know, but I feel like we had to go through those process. We had to go through that process to really understand who we are and what we're going to take, what we're not going to take. Because, but the thing is, it's not like I've learned, I've made a mistake and I fixed it. No, I've made it several times, the same ones, um, (laughs) the same mistakes over and over again. And then I think it finally got to a point for me now over the past five years, I've learned to just accept, okay, you are independent artists, right? Mm. For me on that side of it, I really don't have to go to a major label. Mm. I don't, I'm all in-house so I can do everything myself. Of course, with a great team of people, cause I don't do it all. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's very much a balancing act. And like, I feel like when, when I was working with Prince, I feel like you had to allow yourself to be in his world, meaning get calls at three o'clock in the morning to want to sing or to go perform or to rehearse or um, creatively talk about ideas. A lot of people aren't open to those spaces and places, you know, and um, I just felt like I wanted to grow. I, I didn't always want to sing R and B. I wanted to sing rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love rock and roll, but then I also love, you know, hip hop. I, I mean, I love uh, classic jazz. I love jazz. I love all those things, but I'm, I'm a master of none, none of those things, but I want to learn. So I sit there and I soak it up. 
I watch everything. <laughs> if people say, oh, Liv, she seems standoffish or something like that. No, I am over there in the corner studying, yeah. okay, and asking questions and wanting to push my body to limits that I never thought that I could. If I could do anything in this world in my lifetime before it is over, I do not want to say I should have. Mm. I did it. You know what I mean? I, at least I attempted and I tried it and it's, and it's out of my system. Mm. You know, like when I first moved to Portland, Oregon on a track scholarship, um, the first thing I did, and I don't know where I got this idea is I said, I want to jump out of a plane, child. <laughs> I said, I want to go skydiving. <laughs> And I just, I just don't know. Um, we're, and I went by myself. Because, you know, usually you do those things with friends and stuff like that. You went alone. Alone. And I was driving there and it was like probably an hour and a half away. I probably had only been in the state for like maybe three months. So I'm just driving to this place in the middle of nowhere like a zombie. And... <laughs> <laughs> there's this helicopter or plane on the tarmac and I'm like, just fast forward to that part, but I'm like sitting here like, okay, you're really about to jump out of this plane. <laughs> you know, you're like about to do this, right? Like when I got up there and my feet are like dangling is kind of like when I woke up mm -hmm. and then when I jumped, I was like, okay, this is life. Oh my God. This is life right now. Meaning you, you're, you're a zombie and you're walking through it, not knowing where you're going. But when that opportunity hits, you have to be ready, mm. right? So for me, I'm just like, be ready and be open. Be open to what it brings you. So that's that's what I say before I get on this long tangent, because I can talk, girl, I can talk. Oh, oh. <laughs> we appreciate your tangents, uh, Miss Warfield, yes. because you are so incredible and inspiring. And to hold that thought, to go back to your tangents, I just wanted to bring mm -hmm. now a word from our sponsor. Hey, it's Shanae. Enjoy the podcast. Wondering how I make it? If you ever want to start a podcast or make an edit video content, Zencaster is the best tool for newbies and professionals. Easy to use, phenomenal audio and video quality beyond, and offers a free trial. Join the podcast community at Zencaster.com and don't forget to use my code Zencaster Shanae Stiletto for 30% off your first three months of professional podcasting. The link is in the description of this episode. And now back to the show. Liv, yes. that is amazing. I love that you jumped out of a plane all on your own and then you brought it back to what it means to be alive and to be present in your life and to be aware and to be, I think, consciously engaged with your decisions and what you're doing. It's like, it's a wake up. It is. It, it was a wake up for sure. <laughs> alone. <laughs> alone. <laughs> alone. And it, what was even crazier, it was that I, they was, we weren't sure if I was going to be able to jump because the clouds were so terrible. And I was sitting there kind of like, okay, but we're still actually going to do this. Like, he's like, oh yeah, we're just waiting for the clouds to like dissipate. And just right there, I just, it was just so, after I did, there was just so many things and like life lessons that I kind of learned from it years later, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so glad I did it. Mm -hmm. And and that's, again, I go back to say with like how I'm able to, I feel like navigate through all of these um, different things I've been able to do is because I've tried to have no fear in these things. Mm -hmm. I've tried not to allow people's negativity to tell me about, oh, I don't think you should, or I don't, I don't know if you should try it. Enter into my system. Like we're different. Let me do it. And then I'll make the decision for myself not to, because it could be the best thing for me, the best thing in my life. Like even um, being part of Teatro Zanzani, when I walked in, I was like, what is this? What's going on? I had no clue. I, you know what I mean? No, no acting experience. But when I got in that tent and when Norm was taking me through, I was like, oh my God, this is such a beautiful way for me to grow. Um, as an artist, this is amazing. Like, this is different. This is altogether different, but I, I'm so addicted to it. Sorry. I'm addicted to it and um, I absolutely love it. 
I love it. Oh, it shows. I'm so sorry. It shows that you love it. And I love that you talk about taking leaps and taking those chances, Liv, and how that's given you um, every single next stage of your career. Because I speak about that. I love that you were saying, you know, the things that you did with friends, not everybody would be willing yeah. to do. And when I was little, people asked me, you know, how did you become a world champion? And how did that happen? Oh, really? What did you do? And I always tell people mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily I wasn't the most talented. There were a lot more mm -hmm. talented gymnasts. But if my coach asked me to do something, I always did it. And some, many times mm -hmm. I would be the only one that was there. He would put it out and say, I want you guys to come in on Saturday, or I want you to come in at this time, or I want you guys to stay for two more hours. And many people, many of the gymnasts at the time, they would go home. And I would say, well, Yuri asked me to stay for two more hours or asked me to come in on Saturday. And I'm mm -hmm. going to go. Like, I should go. This is what he thinks yeah. I need to do. And, you know, even on the holidays when we had, like, summer breaks and stuff, and everybody, you know, mm -hmm. they would tell us, you know, please train. If you're not going to be here, if you're going to be going on vacations, please train. I would be, like, the only person that trained during the summer yes. and during, like, those holidays, even if I went on vacation and stuff with my parents, or I would beg my parents to let me do mm -hmm. moderately, like, things that I connected with the family so that I had time to train. And okay. you know, for me, I always say it was about, it was about something other than just having mm. pure talent because I mm -hmm. was raised by Eastern Europeans that always said, okay, you can be talented, but listen up. I can teach all of you guys how to do this. Like they were always very yeah. clear with all mm -hmm. of us and let us know yeah. you're totally capable of this. Like, don't worry. Like the talent is amazing. And if you have a natural yes. inclination for certain things, sure. But mm -hmm. they were always like, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't get too excited. Like if you mm. put in the work and if I can engage you in the way that I need to, if you'll like, if you'll mm. give yourself over to me in that way, because you know, there's a lot mm. of trust involved in that. But I've also took that into my circus career. I've done a lot of things people are not willing to do. And I've done mm. those and discovered a lot um, in mm -hmm. the making of those things. And I've done a lot of things that people thought weren't really for me or made for me or styled for me. And I felt like they were something that I was really passionate about. And I, I've never wanted to be stuck in one vein or in one box of anything for circus. I always wanted to feel, like you said, like soaked up and listening mm -hmm. to people that came into my life that I was fortunate to meet that had so much wisdom. And I love you for that live too, because I think that again, it's not always. It doesn't need to look the same. Everybody learns the same, learns differently, and absorbs, you know, um, artistic yeah. knowledge differently and such. And mm -hmm. staying with how you learn and how you grow the best, I think, is really, really important because not everybody's path is for you. And sometimes yeah. I think yeah. wanting a path of someone else keeps you from your own path. Yes, it's true. You, yes, you sum that up like. Honestly, like I, again, I watch you and I just, God, like you are, you will. <laughs> I'm like, what? Shanae learned that routine in like two days. <laughs> He's only been here for like a week. Okay. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liz. But I love that about you though. You know what I mean? I absolutely love that about you because I knew that, um, it just, it also takes confidence too. You know what I mean? And knowing who you are, just knowing yourself and what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. It's not anything condescending or, or, or pretentious, just knowing who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And not being afraid to just kind of jump because hell you're scared too. deep down inside. You're nervous about it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you have to be, have a little bit of confidence and hold your, hold yourself you know, when nobody else is going to, that's another thing. <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, I think also too, sometimes people think that you've gotten a lot of support when you've had certain like things in your journey. And I sometimes remind people too, like, no, there wasn't. There were some exactly. There that were confident that that was going to work out. <laughs> like it looks amazing now, <laughs> and so right, right, right. Will right. Join you later, but a lot of the journey can be very. Um, it can be a soloist journey. It can be yes. you know, two of you, but it can be very insulated, you know. And it can be a lot mm -hmm. of you with you in in mm -hmm. in owning. Okay, this is the next step that I should make. This is the path that I want to take, and you know, going Absolutely. against the brain, going against. Sometimes it's going against certain advice 
houses as well that, you know, could be really, they sound really amazing, but you're like, again, it's just like not necessarily for you. Um, and yeah, I, yeah. I love that element too, of being in the circus environment because again, in circus, pretty much everything goes. And I've been also too, uh, kind of, um, on my soapbox about wanting to keep circus that way of keeping it yes. and keeping it accessible so that, you know, there's not just uh, one way to circus. Um, and obviously mm -hmm. you, you know, being an artist of color, being a black artist and knowing also too, there's just not one way to do anything because when we show up into environments with uniquely just our own, just by being there, uh, it's very different. Yes. And then finding like what makes you you within this environment that you love um it's been it's been a journey and i'm sure that's been interesting for you too like navigating um all of that about you as well to live um as a black woman oh, yeah. um in this world um in this industry mm -hmm in entertainment, mm -hmm. also to being in the variety world, which is also still very unique. I know we both work yes. and do things all over the world. Um, and yes. so it's still, I remind people, there's not a lot of lives. <laughs> there's only one live, <laughs> exclusively live, but also to how there is uh, still, it's so hyper, hyper specific and special oh, yeah. because there's not an abundance um, of artists of color, and an abundance of black artists um, that are going in and out of these very, very niche environments where, again, you are the face of Zinzani Live. So that is, mm -hmm. I, I would love to hear about how you have imbibed that and, um, you know, the, even, you know, the challenges or, you know, not necessarily even the challenges because I tell people the world has also too been very, very good to me. It's not about necessarily speaking about everything that's bad. I've had people that yes. have really always have seen me and that's also a reason of why I am in places where I am as well because I've been the benefactor of a lot of goodness um, while also mm -hmm. too trying to balance those other very, uh, very acute challenges um, that we face as well still. Sure, sure. Um, first off, I have to say um, I was so excited and I'm putting it back on you because this is just like, I was so excited to see you there um, to join the cast um, because our, our, we need to be represented in those spaces. I feel like when I was finally able to be Madame Zanzani, I think it was two years ago, mm -hmm. um, and there wasn't anything wrong with it. I just didn't see a lot of people that looked like me that wanted to come see the shows. Mm -hmm. So when it was finally represented, me and Alcini, Alcini is amazing. I don't know if you met Alcini. I did yet. have the opportunity to oh, Alcini when he came. I was very, very grateful. I love Alcini. He's amazing. And um, we had kind of like a duo thing together. Uh, not duo, but I was singing to his performance, I guess. And then finally they started to reach out to outlets, um, black outlets or radio and stuff like that. And a lot of people came to see the show. What was amazing to me is that you finally got to reach a demographic that never saw this and their eyes are open and they brought the younger kids to some of the shows. I'm more inspired by that type of energy because I got to see people who look like me in those seats. Mm -hmm. And so um, so in the world of circus, because I don't, I don't know circus like that. I've only kind of been around it for these past two years, but what I can say and what I have been dealing with is I don't see a lot of us in, represented in these spaces. And, um, it was concerning for me and it still is concerning for me, but at the same time, at least I can say who we work with, that they're making an effort and an attempt to change the narrative and the energy around that. Um, just because I could see people light up because this is for everybody. This is an everybody, um, everyone inclusive experience. So it it's concerning, you know, but at the same time, I think it's, how should I say, it's not up to me to break those barriers, but I think it's up to me to, to mention something and say something when I'm like, hey, I don't think there's a lot of people that look like us, <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, it would be so cool if we got a little bit more of, of a variety or um, a little bit more representation because I feel like that's where the audience connects. That's where people can connect. That's when young ones and they you can see in their eyes like, oh my God, yes, this is what I'm passionate about. Like I've seen it in that tent. 
I've seen little, just let's be open and honest. I've seen this little young black girl. She was there at the tent. Um, she was like this the whole time. I think this was probably, this is probably like the, the first show I did, uh, in Chicago, but she was like this the whole time, like clenching her hands, but I could feel her look at her possibility of future. And I'm telling you it was so intense. And I just saw her like kind of hold herself up and like walk different when she left. And I'm just like, that's what I'm saying because we're not always exposed to this. Um, we're, we're, we just aren't. And so I'm just happy to honestly kind of have the, be in this little space, just a little bit of representation that I'm trying to do. <laughs> um, a lot. To kind of make that happen. Well, you know. A lot, a lot of representation, Liv. I just have to say it. But I understand what you're saying. But you're a lot of representation. <laughs> that's the thing like for me i hate sometimes to make it an issue because it's i don't want to make it an issue mm -hmm. but it's something mm -hmm. like you can't ignore the elephant in the room kind of thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like you kind of got to say something <laughs> you know what i mean because if you don't it's okay because i think the i think breaking the barrier and the uncomfortableness of actually saying something because i'm saying it out of love this isn't like i'm angry or upset it's like hey I'm here. The communication and the understanding of who we are needs to be known. Like very much needs to be known, you know, cause that communication barrier, a lot of people who don't look, look like, look like us, it's uncomfortable. Yes. It's an uncomfortable conversation and I'm never there to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm just there to educate. That's all, mm -hmm. you know, and to make it better. That's, that's it. <laughs> That is it, people. You heard it from Liv Warfield. It's to bring us closer together, you know? Yes. Um, you know, I also, to remind people, I am biracial. And, you know, so it's, it, there is, I, my worlds have always been fused. It's always been, I've always had both mm. in my life. I have a, a, a multiracial family um, and, uh, you know, being half Caucasian American and what impact that has had on my life and in, in so many different ways. And so it's multi-layered. And so it's bringing us closer together. I'm so grateful that people are open more and more to these conversations. Um, you know, I had Michael Bajaze on and uh, he's French, but he's also black. and and, yes. Uh, speaking about how, you know, these things have been around for a long time, but now we feel like we have the spaces to be able to say something actually um, mm -hmm. in a way that mm -hmm. we didn't have necessarily before. And so, you know, I think that it is a privilege to be able to speak um, mm -hmm. on these issues um, and to speak mm -hmm. on how we can bridge those gaps and make sure that mm -hmm. the little black girl that you saw at the show like mm -hmm. practically has the pathway to becoming either a Liv Warfield or maybe she wants to do a circus mm -hmm. like a Shanae Stiletto or do yes. a, a Michael Bajaze and, you know, be her own incarnation of into these worlds. Um, and yes. I think it's important every single time I speak with people, they always reflect back to me that they do uh, like to hear that it is still, um, I don't like to use a segregated environment, but that there is still just so few of us here um, in these spaces yeah. of color. Because unless you say it sometimes too, people don't even realize um, that it is still uh, an issue. And I don't know, I, I know that we even try to shy away from issue because we don't want anything to seem critical. Um, right. Said that we are being negative in any kind of way, but it's just an opening of an environment and again to me representation enhances everything i think that our we are at, us as performers and our shows should reflect audiences mm -hmm. and our audiences are diverse and they will continue mm -hmm. to become more diverse as the world continues to be equitable so the more equitable mm -hmm. the world becomes the more diverse yes. our audiences become we should be reflecting that and i am looking forward to that continuing to happen and i also what i told michael in our last episode too when i had him on the podcast was i am very fortunate and would love to live those changes which i know that you also too want to live those changes to live yes. not uh, yes. be you know retired <laughs> and yeah, right. <laughs> seeing those 
those changes happen. It's like I want Liv to be on stage and you know, and Liv yes. and, and 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 me on stage living that. And I think yes. that things happen now quicker and quicker in our generations. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate for that. I'm fortunate to be living in this time and space. We understand mm -hmm. how fortunate we are, but we have also worked hard to be here. We have fought hard yes. to be here. We have carved out our own path and we've done it, like you said, Liv, many times all unto yourself in different ways. Yes. And having that firm belief uh, alone uh, in navigating mm -hmm. such a huge career like you've had and such a mm -hmm. kind of wild, wild west field that we're in with yeah. women <laughs> because it is this environment can be crazy, y'all. Everybody tuning in. Um, <laughs> and even now, you know, again, we're grateful to be working right now as artists. Um, this is still such a difficult time for artists right now. And the advocacy continues on behalf of all artists who are still taking mm -hmm. such a big hit as we navigate through this pandemic with live performances and things, you know, down here and there and you know people not being able to still maintain their live performances so we are grateful to be in Zinzani and to have our job yeah, and to, to be yeah. working and what that means for all of us because it's not done yet and again reminding audiences our environment continues to be so adversely impacted and so we appreciate all of your support um, in every single yes, way yes. Um, and I just want to say again thank you Liv you are an Illinois native also too for the yes. from <laughs> Illinois Liv is yes. an Illinois native, and thank you again so much, Liv Warfield, for being so exceptional, for being such a legend, and for coming mm. on to Live Like an Acrobat podcast today. And I'm so grateful and blessed to work with you every single day and to learn from you and to feel your joy and your mm. spirit every single day, too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Shanae. You're so beautiful, really. I really appreciate you having me. So thank you. Thank you. This podcast was recorded on Zencaster. The Live Like an Acrobat podcast is also available on Circus Talk, the inclusive, independent, and international online network for the circus industry. Circus Talk's mission is to create a level playing field for this industry and democratize access to information. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Live Like an Acrobat podcast. I'm your host, Shanae Stiletto. Until next time, please stay safe and stay healthy.